And we are going to talk about it with our guest uh, and somebody who we're a big fan of. It's the one and only Dalton Feely from John Boy. Dalton, what's happening, sir? Thank you so much for joining us. What's Ski going on, to you? I am so pumped to be here. Thank you, Derek, Jesse. Damn dog, baby. Let's go. <laughs> all pumped. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, it's uh, it's wonderful to have uh, another snake aficionado in the building. Uh, and, uh, you know, we know that you have been... Uh, promoting our, our fine Diamondbacks quite a bit over there, John Boy, along with that that guy that was wearing the the half jersey thing that he had going on there. <laughs> that was nuts. We were texting before the – Jake and I were texting before that series, and I said, you have to be like one of the moms who has the split jerseys because it's your snake. But it's also your too. So you got to pick, and he goes, I'm splitting it halfway. Um, really funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Dalton, I, I feel like it, Diamondbacks fans, I mean, every baseball fan loves what you guys do at John Boy. I've been following for a long time. Appreciate it's that. it's it's Thank fantastic, you. fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. But Diamondbacks fans are not used to getting much love from, you know, national shows, national media. It's not something that they're really familiar with. And yet you guys, it's not only you, obviously, Jake. Uh, there, there, it seems like there's a lot of snakes people over at John Boy relative to like other national outlets. How did this start? Like, how did you become a Diamondbacks fan yourself? Where do we trace this back to? So when I was really young, like this is like the early 2000s, mid 2000s. I was a young kid, loved the purple and teal, loved the big unit, Randy Johnson. I was just enamored with the six foot ten, six foot eleven left-handed pitcher <laughs> throwing nearly a hundred miles per hour. And it was just electric stuff. Uh, ironically, I'm from New York. My, my whole family's Yankee fans. So it's you would think I would be a Yankee fan. That would be the natural progression. Uh, that, that's not the case. Um, and I just became a Diamondbacks fan. And then, like, when I was early teens, uh, Wade Miley was my guy from MLB Draft, Southeast Louisiana University. And then Diamondbacks draft him, has that great rookie season in 2012. And then I was hooked the rest of the way. So I guess I mean I guess this uh, this past series between the the Diamondbacks and the Yankees I mean that must have been that must have been big around the office for you guys yeah. out there. Uh, I have to ask Dalton what what part of yesterday's game from the Diamondbacks side like like made you the most angry or just like broke your brain the most? There there was a lot of chaos happening on the, on the Diamondbacks <laughs> side yesterday. Yeah, usually we get the good chaos, you know, the small ball right, 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 yeah, and confusion for the other team, but. Uh, I, I'm going to say that Jace Peterson pinch hitting for Blaze in, in the ninth inning was my biggest uh, issue. Blaze obviously had his first career home run earlier in that game. They hadn't had somebody get on base in, uh, since that walk Blaze had, which, by the way, was a very poised at bat. I think he was down 0-2, works in yeah. goal, gets the walk versus Rodon. Um, I think he earned that at bat. I understand he's been a, a platoon guy prior to the Perdomo injury. But I would have given him a shot in that situation. Yeah. And no one's predicting the Perdomo injury. You can't predict injuries. That stunk. Um, but I think you let Blaze hit there, and the domino effect wouldn't have happened at that point. This is this is no disrespect to Jace, but I feel like I, I agree with you, and I feel like Blaze has done more to prove that he earned it, at least in that moment, at least right now in this period of time with the way he has been playing since you know spring training started his entire performance during spring and even the way he's played so far this season is it, it just, it felt very much like he at least deserved that, that spot more than what you had as, as an option. Right. And again, that is, it's no slight to Jace. It's just felt like, you know, why, why not just give blaze a shot in that, in that situation? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, the guy had what the second highest average in spring training of all major leaguers at that point. Uh, he played, yeah. he's been elected. He's been blazing so far since spring training. Let, yeah. let the kid get a shot. I mean, I personally was fully expecting Scott McGuff to come through in that, in that situation. <laughs> and to be fair, that pitch was outside. Yeah, we, we touched no. on yeah. this on our post game show yesterday. Scott McGuff clearly has one, you know, one of the, one of the better eyes on this team uh, from a hitting standpoint. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. He, he knew, he knew that right, was outside uh, home plate on par was a bit of a, a bit of a rough day for him. I did want to see him walk off the Yankees. That would have been, that would have been That's, one of the greatest stories yeah. ever. <laughs> the foul ball he hit, he slaps one down the yeah. right field side. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this could be like a, a double to win it. You we know? got it. We got a dog at the plate. We got a dog Crime at the dog. plate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I will say um, it was a great. I mean, it was a sloppy series to begin with, but I, I think the bright side out of it, out of it, though we only won one of three, was that 
the Yankees are supposed to be one of the best teams in baseball this year, and we're this up and coming team still, even though we made the World Series last year. Right. And we were competitive, not playing our best ball. So I think yeah. that's a bright side to take something yeah. from that. Story. I and, and the Yankees were red hot coming in. Like we kind of yeah. said, obviously the yeah. Diamondbacks were too to an extent, but the Diamondbacks didn't come off of just sweeping the Astros. The Diamondbacks came off of taking three out of four from the Rockies. And again, no disrespect to the Rockies, just like none to Jace Peterson, but they're definitely not the Astros. And so for I felt like for the Diamondbacks to kind of come in, uh, you know, not have that great of a game, but still be in the first game of the series and then smoke them like they did in game two. Like it was a very encouraging sign. The results aren't great at it when everything is said and done, but I still feel like what you said there, like they gave they gave it a good uh, they gave it a good fight. They gave it a good effort, even though a lot of mistakes kind of piled up on them, especially in, in the finale. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was funny watching that game. I was in enemy territory. I was surrounded by Yankee fans. So <laughs> usually it's not the case when I'm watching a Snakes fans. I have their allies in the office, uh, you know, getting some text. But during the series, I was not a friend of anyone, apparently. And they made that very clear. <laughs> well, speaking of that Rocky series, the finale of that one had something special happen where you missed the game, uh, game the, the, the game they lost. Uh, and then right. you made up for it by sending this tweet out. Damon, if we could get that tweet up. Uh uh, he said he takes full. I take full blame for last night's loss. In return, I'm watching in a full today, uh, and the D-backs will win five to one this afternoon. Dalton, the Diamondbacks did win five to one that afternoon. So I guess my question for you is, how am I going to die? Because I need to know. I've been trying every time I come across somebody that's psychic or uh, you know that 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 uh, can tell the future. I try to get this information out of them. Uh, were, were you even surprised by your ability to <laughs> predict that outcome of that game there a little bit? Oh, yeah. That, I'm just, I can't believe that actually happened. Um, <laughs> I, I, the win, I wasn't really like, I knew they were going to win that game. I thought, like, if we took two of four in that series, that's not good. And that's a it whole is kind of a disaster. Problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I thought we were going to win. 5 1 was kind of just, you know, let's throw a dart at the dartboard. And ironically, it hit. I guess I've been taking lessons from Trev Ploof when he made that World Series prediction a couple of years ago, right on the money. I guess that was rubbing off on me a little bit, and uh, it was a great score prediction, I guess. I mean, I naturally, I'm tempted to ask you, like, how many games will the Diamondbacks win? Will they win the World Series? Because yes. surely, know that? surely, you, know you, that? surely yeah. you have answers right. to all these questions. <laughs> but on a on a more on a more serious note, uh, it was a pretty big off season for the D-backs, right? I mean, especially mm -hmm. at the end, getting getting Jordan Montgomery on top of all the other additions that they made. And I think that's a big reason why fans are really optimistic right now, even with the series loss to the Yankees, is that Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson aren't going to be in this rotation for very long, theoretically. You've got Montgomery, you've got Erod, uh, you know, yeah. theoretically just uh, just a few weeks away. So uh, what, what were your thoughts about this team's offseason coming in and what was going through your head just like a little over a week ago when the Diamondbacks sort of shocked the world by signing Jordan Montgomery, you know, two days before the season started. I'll start with Monty because that's like the most recent news. I cannot believe he got $25 million guaranteed and that's it. Like, yeah. I was guessing he would make nine, fig uh, nine figures over a hundred million. Um, I'm shocked that another team that especially a playoff caliber team didn't make that offer because Monty is a pretty durable guy. He's been getting better and better. So it's awesome to have somebody of Monty's caliber join that rotation and a rotation that's got Gallon, got Merrill Kelly, Brandon Fought's up and coming, Erod who, who's hurt obviously right now, but has high expectations. His ERA has dropped over the last three seasons. Um, I would, the only downside I would say is that we don't have him right away. So we have Tommy Henry yeah. still, we still have Ryan Nelson. But when Monty gets his, that workload back up, it's going to be very exciting to watch him pitch because I think that's a huge boost to the rotation. It's wild to me that we were kind of satisfied with what the Diamondbacks had as far as acquiring Erod and the rotation with Ryan Nelson or Tommy Henry in it. But now after both of those guys have started and, and really struggled in those starts, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it almost makes us feel like the Diamondbacks kind of might have known this and that might have been the reason for that push for Montgomery, despite the fact that we thought they would not spend that kind of money even for one year that, that this late in the offseason. I guess it wasn't even the offseason. It was basically <laughs> it was right basically before the season. opening day. Right. <laughs> yeah, I. it's shocking because 
we've got a couple surprises in Dimeback trade agency, like the Zach Granke signing. When that when that happened, the six for two hundred six, I was. I remember where I was. I was in standing in this room. I got the alert, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Dimebacks made a big, like a big, big move. Yeah. The Mad bum move, which obviously didn't have the same working effect as the Granky move. But so we've seen some moves in Dimeback free agency history. That's like, okay, they've made some moves. Uh, Randy too, but that was before uh, my time as a, as an <laughs> in-depth in Dimebacks fan. But get, getting making moves like you know even Guriel, getting Guriel back. Jock Peterson, Gurichek, uh, Gurichek, who I haven't yeah. seen yet since he's been hurt. Um, it's been a fantastic offseason in terms of the moves we got, and I'm super excited to see everyone all together once everyone's back. Yeah. Healthy, Monty healthy. It's going to be huge. It feels like there is a little concern now, though, about getting to that point of when those guys get back. I mean, we were kind of looking at the math on it, and it seems like Nelson and Tommy Henry both have about three more starts, maybe more than that left in the rotation. Any mm. concerns for from you there in regards to – making it, I guess, to that finish line where we do have all of those guys in the starting rotation? Uh, a little bit more, I guess, more concerned, as you said, now than I did going into the season. Right, um, right. I'll start with Tommy Henry because I had more hope going into the year for Tommy Henry than Ryan Nelson. The one thing that gives me hope for Tommy Henry is like last season, he ranked in the 89th percentile in hard hit percentage. So yeah. he's inducing yeah. softer contact, which is great, when, especially when you have a great defense behind you too, who you can trust to make plays. The only thing I always worry about Tommy Henry, he's not an electric pitcher. Like, he doesn't register as nearly as many strikeouts. Uh, early in his career, he's never had a season where he's had seven, uh, a seven, over a 7K per nine season. And that's a little worrisome. Like a guy who can strike out some batters, get, get those whiffs. Um, hopefully, Tommy Henry, if you can give five innings, two runs, and pass it off to now a strengthened bullpen, especially when Seawalt comes back, uh, that would be yeah. huge. Um I, I do have a question about you uh, for you guys for Tommy Henry. Should he use the four seam less and maybe turn into a sinker pitcher? Because I feel like that four seam. Every time I see him throw that fastball, it get that's the pitch that gets hard, not that curveball, not the changeup. That's that's fascinating that you asked that because I actually asked that to Tommy Henry after one of his uh, his spring training <laughs> outings, uh, just like maybe okay. two weeks ago or something. So we're we're on the, we're on the same wavelength mm -hmm. here. Uh, he he didn't really seem it didn't seem like that was something that he had really given much consideration to. The sinker is kind of a a, a new experiment sort of a thing, uh, something that he's using to really dust left handed hitters off the plate is what it sounds like. He's trying to use it in inside to, to lefties. It doesn't sound like he really plans on using it a whole lot outside of that. But yeah, the same thought went through my head because uh, Henry definitely doesn't have, you know, one of those electric four seam fastballs. And a lot of times guys in that situation start throwing a sinker and, you know, suddenly they're, they're at least dialing up some ground balls. So you're getting a little bit more, a little bit more movement on the pitch horizontally. Right. So yeah, I, I mean, maybe you and I should be that. I mean, Brent Strom, like he's pretty good, but I think, I think you and I would, would maybe be better at that Dalton. But uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently, <laughs> Apparently it's not, it's not, at least for right now, I don't think that's something that's in the works. Okay. Dalton, we got to ask this. We need to know. We see all the beautiful uh, stuff behind you there. Uh, who's your favorite Diamondback? I mean, this year, yeah, obviously you, you talked about your history of, of loving this team, but uh, particularly this year, who, who are you really just behind as a fan? Ooh, okay. Um, going on current, current, like I like Blaze, especially he's young. I like seeing Blaze the prospect. Of, uh, yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Um, he just got hurt and put on the IL Alec Thomas for me. Yeah. And it's kind of a funny reason why he's Corbin Carroll light, which, you know, very similar <laughs> swing play, very similarly, obviously Corbin's more of the superstar. Um, when I, <laughs> this is going to be such a silly story uh, as a high school baseball player. I think I resemble, if I had to choose someone I played like it would be Alec Thomas. Mm -hmm. Uh, great. I would consider myself a great high school baseball defender had speed, um, the power, uh, uh, I don't know about that, but, you know, <laughs> but the qualities that Alec Thomas brings to the Diamondbacks uh, was is something that I'm like, oh, that's something I would love to bring if I was an MLB baseball player. So that he's a guy to me that's like really easy to root for. And obviously him as a person, he, the energy that he brings is is very um, electric, but it's um, contagious is the word. Yeah, I'm for. yeah. Uh, it's funny. It's funny you bring that up because one of the reasons why I'm a huge fan of Christian Walker is – for years, I made a 
create a character in MLB The Show that kind of looked a lot like Christian Walker. <laughs> uh, and so then eventually I was like, I just got the real thing in real life, I guess. So uh, right. yeah, I'm with you on that. He's mashes and it just like my guy that I played with in the game, he mashed. But uh, obviously last year uh, was an incredible year, storybook uh, season a little bit for this Diamondbacks team. Uh, can you take us through your recollection of last year's playoff run, at least for you? Uh, could you actually believe what what you were seeing uh, when when these when this team was advancing past you know the first round, past the Dodgers, and into the the World Series eventually? Yeah, I I'll start with this uh, early going into the season. I think the over under was like seventy three and a half wins, and I thought this is an easy over. Like I did, I think they were a playoff team. No, I'll be I'll be blatantly honest. I did not think the Snakes were going to make the playoffs last year. I thought they would be better than seventy three wins. I think I had guessed yeah. like seventy eight to eighty wins, but not a playoff team. They Jake, I, I just have to I have to stop you there, Dalton, because we had Jake on right before the start of last season, and he took I guess he took the under. He took the he, under. He told us that the Diamondbacks, after winning seventy four games in twenty two, he had the D backs winning seventy three games last year. So I guess I, I think Dalton is the new. I mean, he's the new favorite around. Yeah, here no, for the, sure, I mean, so. we, we got to get him an invite to the pool party. He's got to come out here and lifeguard. <laughs> now I'll protect the pool. There I'll we get go. The tank, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I um the one thing I'll say with that too is that me and Jake had an argument about earlier in the season last year. He had the Giants over the the Dimebacks, and I'm like, Jake, the Giants are just blah. Like they have every guy that they had was like a six hitter or a, not like a, a rotate uh, a thumper in that lineup. But anyway, off of the that NL West fight between Jake and I. Um, <laughs> So when we matched up against the Brewers, I was like, I was pretty positive about that. Uh, the bullpen was one of the best in baseball since September at that point. Uh, the bats were starting to go. I had faith in the top of the rotation. And they line up with the Brewers. They sweep the Brewers. And then you face the 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 monsters in L.A., the Dodgers. And I was yeah. worried. The bright side was, and this is a little toxic, we're playing the Dodgers. And I just know postseason success is something that has eluded them in non-COVID years. So... I'm like, okay, maybe there's a shot. There's a Cinderella story that could happen. <laughs> um, we were doing baseball, uh, streaming the games on uh, JM Baseball, John Boy Baseball on YouTube, and the Lance Lynn game was maybe the, one of the greatest baseball moments of my life so far. Not one, <laughs> not two, not three. It was special. Three, yeah. Four home runs off of Lance Lynn. Yeah. I live with LeBron meme. Not one, not two. It was absolutely electric. I was going nuts, and... NLCS beating the Phillies, come back three two Philadelphia twice. It's a journey. Obviously, we didn't win the World Series, but the journey was one heck of a ride. It was awesome. You you bring up that four home run game, and I think for me it might be the same thing. I uh, just to tell you my experience. I, I went down. <laughs> I told Jesse I'm gonna go try to get some some pictures, like just closer. You yeah, know, yeah, I'm you were in down. the press box, then you went down. I was in the press yeah. box, and the right. Perdomo, uh, it was Perdomo that started, Perdomo started off, started right? It, so yeah. it was the Perdomo home run right. happened while I was in, like, the elevator going down. So when I got off and walked out, you know, the crowd was kind of going crazy <laughs> and stuff. So I was like, damn, I missed it, right? So then at that right. point, I'm like, I just need to go get as close as possible right now and get myself a picture. And then the other three home runs happened. <laughs> I have at times, when I've been on the pro wrestling podcast that I've done, have talked about how when Dwayne The Rock Johnson comes out and the crowd loses their mind, I could actually kind of feel the electricity they talk about in the air. That is the only other time I have felt it. Like, the crowd wow. losing their mind, especially after, you know, the Moreno home run, it was like any I haven't experienced anything like that in my life. It was the most electric atmosphere that I've ever been in at Chase Field. And like it was just wild to look around at the crowd and have so many people have this overjoyed but bewildered look on their face. Like yes, what is both. happening right now? Like everybody was <laughs> looking at each other with their arms like this go, what is going on? And it was uh it was amazing. It was very much my favorite moment I think I've ever been involved in myself yeah la last thing for me dalton uh we're about to unveil our our power rankings after the first mm -hmm. week of of the season uh which i mean power rankings at this stage of the season it almost it almost feels silly but do you i mean do you have this diamondbacks team like are they are they top five for you or are they I, I mean i imagine maybe they're somewhere in the top 10 like where where do you think they rank roughly here as the as the season gets underway 
if we're going like health for health roster constructed as is through one week of play, they're definitely not in my top five. Um, I would put them closer to nine or 10. I think as okay. the season progresses, my thought would be Monty and Eva being back, Seawald being back. Um, we're in the top five. I think this is truly a potential, like shockingly 92 win, if not more team, if everything goes right. Um, but for the time being, I think, you know, like the Tigers have played out of their mind right now, still undefeated. Pirates have looked really good. Yankees, as we mentioned earlier, Dodgers out of Dodgers. I think there's a lot of teams early on that have looked, I guess, better and healthier than us. But that said, I still have high expectations going into the year. I think that depth really paid off uh, pretty quickly for this team, considering that, you know, it was it was a good problem to have at one point, And now here we are in this situation where – They've already right. lost so many pieces so early in the season. Yeah, I guess that kind of leads me into my final question for you, which is, is there anything that worries you about the Diamondbacks this year? Is there anything particular that you think you know might be, might be a roadblock for them this season? The NL West itself is going to be one heck of a dogfight. Yeah. Uh, I think Jake had mentioned it with you guys and it had told me after, like, there, there's four teams. There could be, you know, one team that misses out, even two teams that could potentially miss out in the playoffs, and it's going to be yeah. devastating for those teams. Uh, I think so. Our series versus the Padres, Dodgers, and Giants is something to watch for. And I'm not worried about this, but I would like to see Corbin get going a little bit. He's had a, mm. uh, a rough first week. The high Agreed. fastball looks like it's been giving him a little bit of an issue so far. I think that will click, but I would just love to see him hit his first home run. And they're like, okay, we're back. We're good. He was rookie of the year for a reason last year, and everything will start to roll. He is Dalton Feely from John Boy. He is the head researcher for John Boy Media and Talking Baseball. Uh, and, of course, uh, more importantly, above all, a Snakes fan. So we thank you, sir, <laughs> for joining us. You can follow him at dfeely. 14 on Twitter. I think that's correct. Um, and of course, uh, make sure to continue rooting for the snakes, young man. We need you in that. We need you over there. John boy, holding it down for us. <laughs> I do want to say before I go, I really appreciate what you guys do as a, as a Dimebacks fan on the East coast. It's really hard to follow, you know, to, to, to really follow and be in depth with the community. And you guys do such a great job with all the coverage that you put out. And I love following through with you guys because I feel like I'm a part of it. So thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thanks, thank you Dalton. so much for coming through, Dalton. We appreciate it.